the 15th and the 22nd. We'll be here if I can. Oh, we don't have to. Okay, do we need to do a separate we, do motion we have, to approve the minutes? We, yeah, yeah, we only approve the agenda. We okay. Approve the I need a motion to approve minutes. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay, Luke made a motion to approve the minutes um, for the board meetings for March 13th and the 20th, seconded by Marsha. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Let's go on to our school spotlight then. Uh, turn the time over to Paige G for the Coke Hill Junior Senior High. Okay, so I, tonight I have a couple different students who are here to talk about some different programs. So here I have Aubrey Sanborn. She's gonna tell you a little bit about herself and the art that she's been working on in Mr. Warnke's class. Um, so uh, we've been able to, I take his advanced art class and his serving class, so I've been able to have the privilege of using multiple different images in my art and was even able to enter in an art competition to possibly get a two-year scholarship at SWAP. Even though I did not win, one of our people in our advanced art class got fourth place um, and the scholarship was for first through third. So we were really close to winning for at least that one person. So I'd like to show you a couple of the things that we've been working on since then. Um, I've taken his ceramics class all year, and we've been working on a bunch of different things. We've made mugs, uh, pots. Um, we've been able to use the pottery wheel with um, a couple of different weeks. So I've been able to make a couple of pottery dishes. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's very nice. That's beautiful. Wow. That's um, not easy. And then also in our ceramics class, we've been making soap dishes to raise money you know, during the plant sale so we can afford more clay since our class is huge for the ceramics class this year. Uh, in my advanced art class, we've been able to do a bunch of different things. At the beginning of the year, we started with paintings, and I did a painting based on Princess and the Frog. And then um, it's music based, so it has little nods to one of my favorite songs from the movie, and it also blows the dark. And then after we did that, we worked on ornaments for Christmas that we were able to oh, do. That's very nice. That is beautiful. Gorgeous. Show them our. And we've also been able to do a bunch of different things in my art class, including making our own stencils for spray paint. So we've been able to do a couple different spray painting pieces and use these wooden boards um, to do our spray paint on. And that involved making our own art stencils for that, and it was a very great time. Um, then after that, we moved on to making our own stamps. Uh, out of carved from linoleum to make prints. Oh, my oh wow. wow. And have also been That's able to make um, a bunch of collages. So here's one I did for the class. And have just been able to have a great time. It's a great class and a great experience to have. Mr. Warkey is an amazing teacher. And it's just so much fun to be in his class. And just be a part of that. So, yeah. Any questions for Is this your first time doing ceramics? Uh, or, yes. So there's just one ceramics class? Yes, there's just one ceramics wow. class. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 That's a lot wow. of kids wow. for six years. Yeah. So you made those mugs up there as yes. well? Yes. Uh, cool. My oh, it was horrible. Oh, oh my goodness. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful. Wow. Oh my god. And right now, in part, we're working on making a 
other dishes, which is interesting. <laughs> And we also made a bunch of different things, and even decorative tiles, which was really fun. You got to be pretty creative with uh, the decorative tiles we made, so I made the That's door really cute. Uh, That's very and, cool. Yeah, it's just a, some great classes yeah. to take. My name is Paige Train, and I am a senior this year. I've competed in OSET since my sophomore year. Freshman year was COVID, so that was not, I wasn't able to compete. Um, but since I was a sophomore, I've come qualified for state OSET every single year. Um, this year, I have qualified in eight events, all but one. And my events I compete in are five individual and um, three team four team events normally, but four that I qualified in. Um, I compete in trail, showmanship, western equitation, English equitation, and showmanship. And for team events, I participate in in-hand obstacle relay, matched pairs, and team versatility. I also compete in team sorting, but that one I just do for fun because I don't get to practice that regularly. Um, I'm super excited. So um, for the pictures, the one up be carrying the American flag, I got the privilege and was selected this year to carry the American flag uh, at the first set meet. The picture in the middle is me and my horse Blazin, and that we are taking our senior lap. And then the last picture is after senior night. I got gifts, flowers, um, little things. I got a wonderful picture with my coach Shelly Swenson. Questions? So state is over, or you're going? No, I haven't competed yet. You haven't. State is May 8th through the 12th in Redmond, and then my goal from there is to comp to do really well and make it to regionals, which is going to be in Moses Lake, Washington, this year. Did you go there last year? Did you make it to regionals last year? Um, I made it to regionals in like one, maybe two events, okay. but it was in Redmond, so it was still in Oregon. But okay. I think most of the qualifying and getting myself there would be a great accomplishment, especially since it's my last year. Yeah. Anything else? Well, thank luck. you. We thank you for having me. Um, we're really pleased to be here to talk to you guys tonight. Um, I'm really proud of this group uh, of robotics students. Uh, several of them have been with me since eighth grade and they're now seniors. Uh, so our program has uh, made a lot of growth over the last five years. Uh, whenever I first started helping uh, Mr. Swinson with robotics, we really just had a few high schoolers that were meeting once a week during lunch for a, a club. And I brought in a group of these eighth graders uh, and they immediately kind of latched on to the opportunity to practice some STEM skills, they're in coding and engineering. Um, and now I have more than 21 students uh, in the high school that are participating. Um, and this year they made it farther than I think a team from Coquille has ever made it, which was really impressive. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Cohen Smith so that he can tell you all about it. Uh, hi. Um, so. 
this year, um, I'm part of 5039. It's one of three teams in Coquille High School. We won our league meet, uh, which isn't something that we are usually able to do. Uh, teams like Roseburg in the past have dominated the field, uh, mostly because of their overfunding uh, and their expansive program. Uh, however, this year, we've tried really hard to do better, and we were able to pull through with that. Um, speaking of funding, we were able to raise around $9,000 this year, uh, some of which were from grants, but about half, a little more than so, was from people like me and Andrew Matlock going to local communities um, and asking for partnerships or ways to promote their businesses um, in exchange for money. Uh, and then we sold candy in the high school and other ways, um, and so we raised about 5000 So that was pretty cool. Um, the program is expanding in other ways than just in the high school level. We're pretty excited to announce that this year we started Lego Robotics, uh, and I begin, I believe beginning last year, but stronger this year, was the Summer Robotics Camp, uh, which helps get youth involved with um, the field, uh, because, I mean, there's a lot of jobs in the tech industry right now, and so whether it's hands-on or coding, uh, we're pretty happy about uh, the way that we're helping the younger generations get involved. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, my team here, we have the robot that we took to state, um, and are we showing the other box or did they not work? Um, <coughs> Alright, so we'll show them this robot and then if they want to see our sumo bots, they can see them uh, later. Okay, uh, and this is the bot. Currently the arm does not work uh, because we tried to do something a little more ambitious. Didn't work out for us, but we tried nonetheless. Um, we did pretty good estate for it. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Jacob Kennard. I'm the lead coder uh, of the, I coded this robot. Um, I spent a lot of time on it uh, for working on state and stuff. Um, it was a challenge getting back into coding, but I also took a more uh, like creative role for our team. Uh, I made um, some stickers and stuff that we gave out to other teams. We forgot to bring stickers today, so I'm sorry about that. But um, I also did all of our uh, like online presentation stuff that we uh, brought to other teams, um, all, like pretty much all the graphics for our team, um, and so I helped out in uh, many ways. I was this part on uh, the DevilBots team. We have three different teams. Uh, these two lovely gentlemen are on our other team, if they would like to talk about that. My name is Skylar. I was on team 9487. I was the uh, lead coder in lead engineer for my team, and the only senior. Uh, I was tasked to help with the new generation of robotic kids uh, to continue our program. Any questions? This is Simon Tanny. He's, he's a junior. Hi. Uh, <laughs> How are y'all doing today? <laughs> Anyway, uh, my name is Simon Zanny, and I, uh, this is my first year of robotics. Um, so far, I have just been promoted to co-project manager, but I'm actually really pleased. I wasn't expecting to make it that far in this program to begin with, and that really just goes to show how quickly you can learn and really make it up the ranks in this program. Um, so far, I only know how to build and to operate the robots, but I really am excited to see just how far I can put, uh, take this position. So. Hopefully, I'll be seeing you all very soon. Yeah. Any questions for them? What do you guys like about doing robotics? Um, I like the competitive aspect of it. Um, I love being as project manager, able to help my teammates um, in any way that they need. Um, personally, though, my favorite part is being able to get money and buy cool things. <laughs> These were prefabricated parts, um, but we are working a lot harder to get. We have three, I, two or three? Uh, right, so we have about three 3D printers, two a larger format, and so we're trying to get into the competitive level where schools like Roseburg um, and then like all of Portland and Eugene um, are able to compete at, and we're pretty excited. Um, that's my favorite part. We have 3.0, uh, our driver's ed presentation by Deputy Owens. What's that? 
Hi. So, good evening. I'm John Owens. I'm the school resource deputy. Um, so I just want to present the driver's ed program to you. Uh, obviously, you know that the school resource position is a year-round position. So the question was, what do I do during the summertime? And so one of the opportunities was to do driver's ed. And so what I did is I took a class through Western Oregon University and ODOT in combination. I was going down on the weekends during, in January through March. It was under 20 hour uh, class instruction. Uh, the first phase, what we did is went through the playbook to get familiar with the playbook, which I'll be teaching the, the students. And the second part was we took a chapter of the playbook and we taught it to the uh, other people in our class. And then phase three, we put together our, our route and then we had a, and that we had to put down the objectives and then we were the instructor taking our uh, people in our classes through it first. And then the last one when we got tested on, um, we took some students who were just finishing their driver's ed program and took them through our route and then evaluated them and then we got graded on how we did with that. Um, so, and actually, so you can see I actually got my instructor's certificate, so I made the first part, so that's good. Um, so what's next? For me, I need to um, get my local routes and final drive ev evaluated by my mentor. I've got those done. I've sent them to him, so I'm just waiting to get a response, and he'll let me know if I mean, need to make some adjustments or changes or whatever. Um, once that's been done, Miss Yee and uh, Mrs. Clapper are work will be working on paperwork that needs to get done that I'll uh, submit my uh, routes and my certificate. We'll send it up to ODOT and then they'll, they'll look at it and uh, certify the Coquille School District as a driver's ed program. Um, so once that's done, then the next step would be to uh, schedule classes uh, for the summer. And right now we're just looking at the summertime. Um, and the classes are, it's a seven week class uh, you have to, the students, each student has to put in 30 hours of classroom time, and this is not negotiable. It's through ODOTS, through the state. Uh, 30 hours of classroom time, six hours of behind the wheel time, six hours of observation, which if you're not driving and you're sitting in the back seat observing the, the driver, the other student is. Um, and then there's five hours of personal drive time with parents. And that's to finish the class, you know, and get, get uh, the certificate through us, um, for a student to get their actual driver's license, they have to put in 50 hours of driving. You know, the parents sign off on that. Um, our hope is to get 16 students signed up for the summer, start out at that many, um, which I don't know if that's a lot or not, but I don't want to uh, go gung-ho and then end up on my face. So I want to I want to do a good job. Um, Again, it's a seven week class, so we would begin in, in June, maybe a week or two after school got out, and that would take us into August. Um, the thing about it is once a student is signed up and they start it, you, can't, you really can't miss classes. You gotta make the classes and the drive times and stuff like that. I realize you know, students might get sick, something might come up, but for the most part, you really gotta stick to that timeline uh, for the students to, to finish. Um, again, the materials, for teaching, there's the instructor's book is here, and then I have this uh, instructor's training manual, and this is the, the book that the students will be using, and there's stuff where they can fill in, and uh, but that's what we'll be going through. And then Sean, if you'll please, what's neat is they've got so it's online, and then the content with that arrow pointing down, actually just up to your left, upper left, so that will drop down, and then. Like if you went on to chapter three, so and then go ahead and uh, flip over this bad yeah, two or three times, and one more time, one more time. Actually, just one more time. <laughs> Go ahead and play it again. It's not moving forward. Okay, so so this is like this is what I taught. We're talking about traffic signs and stuff like that. But as you go through, it's got videos that you can show. Um, so it's set up great that I, there's nothing really that I need to come up with. I'll just teach from this material here. 
Um, in this book here, they've got the, uh, the pre-test that the kids will take before they start each chapter, and then there's an exit test, and they have to get an 80% on all the exams uh, to move on. Um, there's also assignments and stuff like that. So it's all, it's all in the book here. There, again, there's nothing new that I have to, to make up. So it's, it's, a really, it's a good program. I mean, I really actually just taking the class for myself was good. I learned a lot of stuff and I realized there was a lot of stuff that I wasn't doing that I should be doing, even as a deputy. <laughs> um, but I'm a young deputy, even though I'm old. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing it. Again, the next step is getting that, that paperwork to ODOT, getting approved by them, and at that point, then we can really get the ball rolling. Um, the cars out there, I'm sure you guys saw it when you came in. I really thank Nick and Nate for the work they did on that, and Sierra getting stuff. Um, so they, everything's lined up. It just Now I just need to get the, the routes approved, and, and we should be good to go. So do you guys have any questions for me? I do. Yeah. I have a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Me too. Teenage drivers. But, so is the class like one hour a day, are we talking? Good question. So you've got to have 30 hours yeah. total. So when I'm talking to my mentor, who also was the one that taught our class, what they do is they do two and a half hours twice a week. So that's five hours a week. And then six weeks of it. Yeah, so there's 30 hours. And then okay. what happens is even though it's seven weeks, it's the first week is uh, the teaching time. Then the second week, you drive what you taught, and then you're teaching new stuff that second week, and then you drive. So the seventh week is actually just driving, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so because you, you got to teach, and then you drive what you taught, mm -hmm. and uh, and you can only drive an hour and a half each time you drive. They're very strict on on stuff. Like I talked to Judy Bloomquist. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Judy? She taught, and so I was asking what she did. And is this recorded? No. <laughs> <laughs> she said the no statute of limitations is probably know. over. So it was. She did a good job. So I'm not. But she would take the kids <laughs> out to I five, which I think is great. But you think about leave here. It's you know 75 miles. So there's, which you get the highway driving time, but um, don't get a lot of freeway time. And so a lot of our first drives will be locally or will be locally all the time but the first drive is actually parking lot and that's the way it's set up second drive is through town here and then i'm going to teach a little bit on highway driving and then the third fourth fifth and sixth drive we're going to be going to band and into coos bay hitting um 101 and 42 and 42s and so yeah. And do they take a test at the end? And does that mean you don't have to take the test at the so that's, CMV or? Yeah, my understanding is, is once they complete this, they get the 80%. Um, then that, because when they, actually when they take their permit test, that's yeah. the test. So you would do this before you get your permit or after? You have to, you have, to have your permit to do the class. So then you've already taken that test. So you've already taken that test. And then once they do the driving part with me and they finish the, the final drive test. Yeah. The uh, DMV accepts that as the drive, drive test. test. So yeah, as long as they come in with that certificate saying awesome. they've completed it. So, okay. and as far as 80%, um, I mean, obviously, you want the students to know what they're doing. If they don't hit the 80%, there's remedial. And I talked to my uh, mentor about that, and he says, absolutely, we, you know, do remedial stuff. Because I would have been the student going, I didn't get an 80%, am I out? You know, so. Um, <laughs> So anyways, uh, it's a great program. Um, Does it have to be done in seven weeks? Is there options to do like a, a two week? <clears throat> um, so you said it was 30 hours classroom time, six hours drive time, yes. six hours observation time, and five hours of driving with parents? Correct. So yeah. that's 42, 42 hours? So there's an option to do the 42 divided into two weeks instead of a whole seven week long course? No, or is it strict? We, is it like it yeah, has to be seven strict. weeks? Yeah, it's pretty strict. The only thing that changes up is in the summertime you can do, you can uh, finish the teaching time like in two weeks or three weeks, but the drive time is still six weeks. So you can't cram. And the summertime is the only time you can do that. Um, 
I know for me, if I was to try to cram in that much, for me as a student, it would be difficult. So, um, so right now I would say we're looking at yeah, the seven week, and it's going to be every week will be five hours of, and it'll be like Tuesday, Wednesday will be the class time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday will be the drive time with the students. So. So it'd be different students each time that you're driving with. Correct. So yeah. for, for one individual student, they're not there Monday through Friday. Yeah, they might just be there on Monday. They, them and their partner, they'll drive an hour and observe for an hour, and then they're done for that. That, that uh, week? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it's a work in progress. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, let's get to our written reports. Any questions for Tiffany for Winter Lakes High School? Saw on the, you guys already had your prom or you're having it really soon? We're having our prom on May 2nd. May 2nd, so I knew it was really soon. And where's that going to be at? Oh, okay. Right. Um, any questions about Winter Lakes Elementary? I don't see you, Sharon. I guess she's not here. Um, any questions for Paige about the high school? Lots of busy stuff for the yes. end of the year <laughs> for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, Big group of kids to OSU. Mm -hmm. Big group of kids to OSU. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we ended up having around maybe like 50 kids go. Um, it was a great time. Um, we went and toured and took them to the trampoline park and they had a blast. Okay, any questions about the junior high? Probably not, but I don't know. I think we kind of lumped those together. So, but. <laughs> well, I will say two good track meets, guys, mm -hmm. for that Coquille put on. So. Well, I was going to say there was lots of teacher volunteers that were there helping. It can't happen with one person. It's a lot of work. So, thank you. Um, CBE, any questions for Mr. Ruiz? Happy that the carnival is coming back? Yeah, I'm excited about the carnival. Mm -hmm. It's been a few years. Yep. Yeah. I had a question. I I heard that there was going to be a talent show again this year, and I I don't know if I didn't see it on the calendar or I missed it. Or yeah, it, uh, it's not on the calendar. I apologize. It's maybe it is our next board meeting. That's what I okay. Um, I knew we had like a bunch of things on that last yeah. day. That board meeting is a Kind of May the 15th at 6 o'clock, <coughs> and we're going to start uh, having our sign-ups meeting in May, pretty much end of April, for our participants. It is okay. one here. Oh, is it? Yeah, right here. Oh, okay. Okay, I was looking at this page, so I guess I missed it, but you're right. Okay. Okay, Lincoln School of Early Learning. Any questions for Ms. May? You guys have field trips at the end of the school year, field trips? And yeah, we have to get the literacy coming up at the end of April for yeah. our first graders. So that's at SWAC, that. right? Yes. That's the one at SWAC. Yes. Okay. And our roundup is tomorrow from 4.30 to 6.30. Yes. Hopefully good turnout. Yes. yes. Any questions for her? How's the library coming along? It's pretty organized, and we're starting to get in there. So. And maybe this summer I'll get through my books so I can give you some, because I know I <laughs> promised you some a long time ago, and I haven't done it. Um, okay, CTE Special Programs Director, that's Jeff. Any questions for him? All right, any questions for Tanya, our Curriculum Director?
Um, I was excited to read that you said maybe you'd have some activities for TAG students in the future that you're hoping yes. that that's. Yes. Or hoping to do. Or should I just glad I'm going to do a presentation tonight? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're not for your sake. So. Yeah. Um, no, we are, we are, as we're growing the population, which largely comes from our modest building, um, and folks identify, and we're getting several students at a great level. We're looking forward to that. Great. Any questions for Tony, our athletic director? Good job on the track meets, that's all. That's yes. Right. And I know those are a lot of work. So. Um, any questions for maintenance? Is Carl not here? I guess he's not here. So. Okay. Uh, any questions for um, Sean for technology? I know you've done a lot of work and we appreciate it. We appreciate getting all of those changes, I, and I don't know, the switches or whatever those things are called that improve the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, technology is pretty much just on a five year cycle with most things. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff that just kind of change every so often. Yeah. You know, and just kind of keep it going. Kids need to have the best technology they can have so they can get their curriculum, get their schoolwork done, get it out there and get their teachers. Well, the thing with technology is probably it goes underappreciated until it doesn't work, and then everyone's like, <laughs> you, know, yeah, so, you know how much so, it's appreciated when suddenly it stops working. Right. <laughs> so I know it takes a lot to keep it working. So thank you. Um, food services. Any questions for <clears throat> Val? Okay. Um, any questions for Nate for our transportation? I'm sure you're keeping busy with all of the activities going on this time of year. So, actually, I have a question. Sure. Having a junior high child on the track team over in Bandon today, yes. the bus leaves early, it just drops them off, and then it comes back later after all. Is that how they're doing that? To yes, ma'am. To okay. fulfill our obligation to uh, transport students home, because we, were, we have a track meet in Walford as well tonight. Yeah. That was our solution to uh, make sure the track kids get to and make sure the kids get home from school. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not often that we have to do that. But when you have two things at one time, yes. that happens. Okay. But I was just was curious. And any questions for John Owens, our, our uh, school resource deputy? Looks like you had a lot of things to take care of. <laughs> I don't know, is it appropriate to ask how many times are we dealing with these vape sensors going off? I don't know, is that appropriate to ask? Like, in They're a week? <laughs> we have, they are installed and they're working. <laughs> so is that something like every day you're dealing with that multiple times a day? or And maybe that will be until kids realize they're there and then they won't do it. And it's sort of like and it's the flow is added. Okay. You know what's nice though is that there's students who are I think, tired of it, meaning they want it to stop. The vaping? Yeah. They want they want to stop. Well, the, the other students. students. Oh, want they want other students are, yeah. to yeah, stop. So I, see. I think students want to come forward and say, you know, there's some, you know, take some responsibility. Good. Okay, um, our fiscal director's report. I don't know, are we going to you, Denise? For yeah. That? Okay. Yeah. So um, we are um, on board, on, we're targeted towards, and we're projected that we are going to hit our $1 million contingency. And at this time right now, we're $109,000 over our projection. So we're going to have an additional 109000 at the end of the school year. Okay. Anyone have any questions for me?
Okay, then Wayne, we'll turn the time over to you for your superintendent's report. Sure. Um, Population report, we were down eight students from where we were this time in March. However, I have signed a number of interdistrict transfers this week, so I do believe that number is going to bounce back up. Um, we did not have any emails, and then I wanted to have an opportunity to share with the board our bond presentation. Just takes a, a few minutes to be able to run through this so that all the board members this presentation has already been um, presented to three of our affected school staffs we will even today shared this information at rotary and this is information that we're continuing to push out so i wanted to make sure that the board as a whole had a chance to see this information shall we go ahead and so um, starting out with the presentation, I want to make sure that our folks here in the audience as well as our folks at home, um, in 2020, the Coke Hill School District had the brick engineering firm out of Portland come down and do an analysis of our schools, and they said that we had over $61 million of repairs that needed to happen within the schools within the district. and. The school board has targeted three of our schools for the bond and the money that we are going to be going after in the bond. Coke Hill Junior Senior High School, the construction of that building started in 1948. It was finished in 1951. And there are sections of that building. I had the opportunity to speak to Carl Wilson at lunch today. And he talked to me about the bond that the, the previous bond, the district passed, and the remodeling at the high school. And even after they did that remodel, there's still significant portions of the high school that still are very much the 1948 version of that building. Lincoln is another school that we'll be looking at. It was completed in 1961, and CVE is the third school, and that building was completed in 1972. The Coke Hill School District went out for bond in May of 2021 and 2022. Both of those bonds failed, and the school board took it upon themselves to really take a hard look at what was on those bond measures and trim those down to really focus on the area that we came forth in our school safety survey was really safety was the number one thing and then continuing to improve our infrastructure. This last um, school year, our board took time to visit each one of our school buildings, listen to staff as well as community members and get input. And then this past fall, they had work sessions where they narrowed down what they wanted to have in the bond. Sean, next slide. So the bond itself that we are going out for in May of 2024 I first want to say that we've already received some free money. Six million dollars we have been allocated in a grant. The awesome grant is the Oregon School Capital Improvement Matching Grant. We've already received notice that we will get six million dollars of free money in Coquille if we're able to pass the bond, have to pass the bond. The bond amount that the board has set is 14 million five hundred and fifty five thousand obviously they've made a dramatic decrease from the total number of improvements that the brick report said of over 61 million is this going to raise taxes absolutely it's going to raise taxes it's going to raise the tax assessed value a dollar 41 per thousand of taxed assessed value this is a critical component and I need to make sure that all of us are aware because I'm sure at some point we're all going to get asked this question. There are, on your tax sheet, there are two numbers. There is the real market value and the tax assessed value. Your tax assessed value is usually 40 to 50% of the actual real market value of your property. Have to make sure that people are looking at the tax assessed value, multiplying that number a um, dollar 41 and then dividing it by a thousand I will share that more in just a second we believe that we have an opportunity to also apply for additional grants a seismic grant of up to 2.5 million dollars that grant opens in September 
bringing our total amount that we can spend on making improvements to our schools to 23 million 55,000. For that amount, there is not going to be anything flashy. There's not going to be new turf football fields. There's not going to be new gymnasiums. There's not going to be new schools. What that money is going to allow us to do is focus on school safety and making sure that our lights on and our heats on in our buildings every day. And the reality is, especially those folks here in the room, you know that our boiler has failed at the high school twice already this year. We know that it's only a matter of time before that boiler is gonna have to be replaced. This money is really about fixing our infrastructure and making sure our schools are safe. Show me. If you go to records at Coos County, you can type in your address and it will give you this box right here. You can see that RMV, that's real market value. That's not what we're talking about. The AV is the taxed assessed value of your property. And again, you can see that this property is actually um, 486,000 is the real market value, but the taxed assessed value is only 193,000. And just in case you were wondering, the average tax assessed value of homes in the Coke Hill School District is $158,000. So if you take $193,000, multiply it by $1.41 and divide it by $1,000, that's going to increase this individual's property taxes $272 per year or $22.70 per month. Again, yes, it is going to raise um, taxes in Coquille, but I, I want to stress the fact that the board has done the work and narrowed the bond projects down to truly working on safety and infrastructure to make sure that our schools can last another 50 years. Sean, next slide. Um, at Lincoln School of Early Learning, the projects that we're looking to do is we want to replace and upgrade their HVAC system replace and upgrade electrical distribution. We are maxed out at Lincoln. Today's education requires a different level of technology and electricity. We need to be able to expand. We wanna add a secure vestibule entrance with a reception area and an intercom system. A secure vestibule is a double entrance. The first set of doors are open, allowing folks to come in. The second set of doors are always locked. We want to control who accesses our schools. A secure vestibule will allow us to do that. We also want to replace the fire alarm system and add fire sprinklers. We want to replace and update our plumbing and piping fixtures and create ADA access by adding an elevator to Lincoln so that none of our students have to go outside in order to go to the cafeteria. That happens today. Next slide. Um, this is the current floor plan of Lincoln. Next slide. The area in pink or salmon color will be extensive remodel. The area in yellow will be more of a moderate remodel and the area in blue is really painting and flooring. Next slide. Um, at Lincoln Elementary School, when you pull up in the parking lot, you're often wondering which, which, which entrance do I go to? Do I go on the left side of the gym? Do I go on the right side of the gym? We will create a designated entrance for Lincoln, um, highlighted by the, the landmark of having the raised ceiling to add natural light and add that secure vestibule. That is the only doors that will be open only access in and out of Lincoln so we can control that access to that school. Next slide. At Coquille Valley Elementary School, and some of you might remember this as Coquille Junior High, we want to create a secure vestibule entrance, again control who's coming in and out of the building. We want to improve and update our office functionality. 
currently we have an interior office where they cannot see danger until danger is at the door we want to move our office out so that the office folks can see the danger alert the authorities before the danger gets to the door <coughs> we want to replace our boilers and our heating ductwork we want to upgrade our electrical distribution and upgrade and replace plumbing and piping fixtures next slide this is the floor plan of Kokio um, Elementary School. Next slide. Again, the area in salmon color is extensive remodel. Yellow is moderate remodel. And then the blue is really painting, flooring, um, just some cosmetic upgrades. Next slide. Um, this is a breakdown of what that secure vestibule will look like. Currently, um, Tokyo Valley has a very different kind of entrance and it multiple doors this will limit it to one set of double doors to control the entrance to the building next slide and then you'll notice that Tokyo Valley is something that is not currently there windows to the outside we want our office staff to be able to see the parking lot so they can see danger before danger is at the front door very different and a de again, a designated um, landmark with the raised ceiling so everybody knows that is the one entrance into Coquille Valley Elementary and then extend the covered area so we have ample space for students to be out of the rain, either waiting for pickup or before school. Next slide. Um, Coquille Junior Senior High School. The high school is the oldest building. The high school will need the majority of the money of the bond. We want to do a seismic upgrade of the gym and classroom wing. We are going to do a major renovation, including an HVAC system, windows, flooring, electrical, and plumbing. The 1948 section, or what I call the long hallway in the high school, that entire hallway will be taken down to subfloor and studs. This is an extensive remodel, removing any current asbestos and making the necessary improvements to have modern classrooms and safe classrooms for our students. We wanna add the secure vestibule to control our entrance in and out of the building and reconfigure the office. Our secure vestibule will also be added at the lower end of the building with a multi-purpose room. We want to use the multi-purpose room as it was originally intended. It was never intended for that multi-purpose room to only be a cafeteria. It is a multi-functional space. It's a large space and we want to bring it back to its original purpose by adding new flooring, paint, and windows so that that can be accessed as an athletic facility um, both for practices and lower level competition. We want to modernize our classrooms with paint, flooring, and technology. We heard from students tonight how technology is making a difference in their lives. Our board wants to add that technology into the classrooms so that our students have access to it every day. Next slide. Again, you can see um, our Tokyo Junior Senior High School is over 100,000 square feet. That hallway, the area in salmon color would be extensive, yellow would be moderate, and then the blue would just be some cosmetics. And then you can see the south wall on the gym is also red. That is the wall that we would need to make the seismic improvements. Currently part of that wall is only a temporary structure. Next slide. The lower area, which is currently normally known as the cafeteria, want to bring that back to its original purpose of a multi-purpose room. Next slide. Um, looking at the detail and the reconfiguration, again, this is a rendering, a drawing. Once the bond passes, we have a lot of work and a lot more detail and decisions to make about what the final um, outcome would be with the plan. But I think this gives a clear understanding of how we would add the secure vestibule, reconfigure the offices to make sure that we have space for all of our employees. 
Currently, if you haven't visited our high school, our nurse is operating out of a closet at the high school, and we need to make sure the nurse has a space to work with students. Next slide. This is the new entrance, um, bringing that out so that we can add the second set of double doors to secure the entrance. Next slide. And then down below, we would add a covered area and expand our covered space over our new CTE center so that students have more space to work on hands-on projects outside. Next slide. all I have. I wanted to make sure the board had a chance to see the information that Melinda and I have been sharing with different community organizations and staff organizations. Um, and so far, I believe that our we've been very well received as far as sharing this information. Do any of the board members have any questions or anything about the presentation that we're our traveling roadshow? <laughs> all right. Looks great. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Um, we have 7.0, uh, the consent agenda. It's uh, two calendars here. Is this? That is okay. correct. Yeah. Our calendar committee has been working uh, and actually put in an enormous amount of time and discussion into a variety of different calendars. So <clears throat> within these two calendars, they both have the same amount of time dedicated for professional development and also um, work days, grading days for staff. But in the first calendar, you'll notice that there are five, no, excuse me, six red PD days. That's because those PD days are early release, one o'clock PD days, and spreading it out more over the length of the time. By doing that, we actually add three instructional days to the calendar, and that's three more days that students are able to get um, food and interact with caring adults and be in safe buildings. The second calendar is matched off of what I would call a very traditional coquille calendar. There are only um, three, excuse me, four PD days counting that November 18th, and those other three days are full days. And this stays status quo with where we were this year. The first calendar is going to have a roll-up cost associated because we are going to need to add days to our classified employees. So there is a, a raised cost with that one. And the second one really is staying status quo. We wanted to bring this to the board and give you a couple options to discuss and then um, allow you to choose whichever calendar you think will be best for us for next school year. If you, if you would like, to, you are more than welcome to table if you want more time to think about it, Steve. Um, but the sooner we can approve the calendar, I know there, there are staff and families that are trying to plan out vacations and things like that for next school year. And anything that deals with an airline, if you can purchase tickets early, you can save money. So I know that there's some folks that are wanting to make some plans accordingly. and. It does affect our budget because if we select the calendar that adds three days, three instructional days to the calendar, that is going to be a budget impact that Denise needs to know. Is there a specific have, have question? Have staff? I mean, I know Mr. Ward said it's kind of been brought up to the high school. I don't. I. I'm, I mean, I know what I think, but I hate to make a decision just for me. You know, I want, I want to know. 
what everybody likes. I was thinking the same thing. What did, what did the staff and, say? And what we talked about with the calendar committee was we were bringing two calendars that I think we can live with as, as a staff. Um, I would, you are more than welcome. Um, John was a member of the committee. Tanya, Rachel, Val was a member of the committee. Um, Amy was part of that. I believe so was Tiffany, Armando, Paige. So you, you have some committee members in the audience. If you would like to ask them their input, you're more than welcome to do that. So on the first calendar, the red days mean early release, but on the second day, the second calendar, red days mean no school. That's right, no school at all. They're full day, eight hour PD versus spreading that out as just half day, smaller chunks. kids like don't get food on the weekend I would probably work with her I'm, I'm see how curious can. what yeah. that is because I do know people who they really appreciate the summer lunch programs that's a um, but I'm I'm not saying that I'm against what you're saying but it, it's like is this one kid that doesn't get food or is this 100 you know I, that's what I'm I have, um, around Uh -huh. Because often those are the same students who might have food insecurities in their house. Did you say AD or 1880? 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. Okay, we can get back to you with that. We can get back to you with that exact number because basically all of our 10 month classified employees would then be working three additional days. So we would have to calculate that in because all of them are paid at different hourly rates. But we can get you that exact, we can get that exact number. It is, it is an increase. So it is an increase to our roll of costs. Is it a significant increase? We have. 85 classified employees, and we'll be out adding mm -hmm. um, 24 hours to 85 employees. Yeah, I think I think that would be enough of an. It's it would be a significant increase based on looking at our other roll-up costs. Yeah, I Is this something the school board is supposed to decide? What the calendar is? <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of pressure here. Yeah, well, I feel like I don't know if I have all the information to right. like. Um, if you want a recommendation from the superintendent, the superintendent is concerned about our total roll up costs and the fact that we're currently in negotiations. I would recommend that we go with the calendar that most matches what we had this year and not increase our roll up costs. For staffing, I agree 100% with what Val said that I would love to see our kids in school three more days, and so that we can feed them and provide education and supporting adults. But there is an added roll-up cost, so my recommendation would be that we stay with our traditional schedule that doesn't add that to our budget for next year. And maybe it's something we look at for next year if we don't have. Absolutely, I think I think there's. I think there is a pathway of doing something that we are very close to even being able to do some kind of 
weekly early release. We were very close to that this year. And I think that we have a technology glitch in our student information system and how we do progress reports that really held us up from being able to do that this year. But I am optimistic that we will work through that technology glitch so that we could maybe look at it early re one day early release um, to be able to do a variety of things that would benefit um, staff and students. So the draft six is the, the current one. The second no, the one first one, one is the one. new one. I can't, I can't read the print so I'm playing in his family. <laughs> the master draft, the one that just says draft is 40, what is like our normal calendar this year. The top one, six early release PD is the, would be the new one with the roll up costs. And just as a rough number, Denise estimates that that roll up cost for those 80, um, it's not all 85 are 10 month, there's just 85 classified employees, but she estimates that's gonna be somewhere um, between 45 to $50,000. I do see that as a significant roll up because we are in the middle of a biennium and very different than if we, we do know how much money we're going to get next year. That would be a significant roll up cost mm -hmm. for us, especially because we still have some key things with our certified negotiations are still in progress. We've got a lot of roll up costs this year, don't we? <laughs> Steve, it's coming. Yes, Steve, yes we do. Yes we do. So yeah, the one that I would recommend would be the, the second one. But I and I do understand I do fully understand why mm -hmm. staff and Al would would suggest um, the other one. I make a motion that we approve the one without the roll-up cost. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. I have a motion by Steve to approve the, should I call it master draft sure. calendar? Mm -hmm. And a second by Julie. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Um, well, we just, okay, did the budget committee application, so I guess we have to also do that one under the consent agenda. Yep, we have, we have some applications. Oh, these are both listed on as consent agenda, but one was, yeah, the one was I, actually I discussion. changed action. it on my Word, but not my PDF. Okay. So I have. Oh. I didn't, yeah, I didn't both consent. They both this first one should have been discussion. I, yes. Discussion. Yeah. So we, the budget committee, do, what we have to approve for that? We a, have two new applications. We have one from the uh, employee from the hospital that's filling theirs out. Uh, we have six out of the seven spots filled. We have um, two that are returning that were on uh, at prior to last year and that have agreed, agreed to come back. I'm just having a hard time finding people who have the time to. So, um, so we have do we to, have to approve anything? Yeah, right we now? have to approve so we, the we have these two. We have these two applications. But we don't have their applications. I'm going to hand them down. Julie has them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other ones we uh, had from last year. We had multiple openings on our budget committee. Some of them were recently unexpected, but we have some folks that are willing to step up. Thank you. 
is the evidence I can get the bill for. It might be at six. So are you looking for a motion to approve yep. uh, these two applicants uh, for the budget committee and the, uh, to adopt the calendar? Well, we already adopted, we, we adopted the calendar. We adopted the calendar, yep. Just, we want a motion to approve those two members to add to our budget committee, yep. You're going to force me to wear my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> you probably need a magnifying glass for Not this. quite there. <laughs> Is there, is I don't there, know, this one's pretty tight. Member, I know, that's what it could be. Is there another board member willing to make the motion? Steve's ready to second. <laughs> well, I have no problem approving. I can read their names. I have no problem with either one of these people here. Uh, I'll make that motion. We approve these two applications. Okay. I'll second. Okay, Steve made a motion to approve. Um, do I need to read their names? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chadwick Everett and Sean M. Sanborn as budget committee members. And the second, I've had a second by Marsha. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, now we're on to our consent agenda. Um, hopefully we've had time to read the policy. We spent a lot of time in the policy committee figuring out how to do transcript evaluations for people who want credit for, I guess I should say for homeschooling and stuff. But. Mm -hmm. I'll move to accept the consent agenda 8.0 through 8.2. Okay, I had a motion by Julie. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Luke made it. Luke seconded that we approve 8.1 and 8.2. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we will move to 9.0, staff from public comment. Do we have any staff for public comment? All right, then I'm going to adjourn our meeting. Thank <laughs> you.